What's up, y'all? So, I researched a little bit. I found that Patoka is still getting wrecked, unfortunately, but we'll get there in a second, because check this out. There are many ways that you can source avocados, right? You can get some organic ones, some regular ones, fair trade ones. That's the one you want to look for, fair trade, because that means that it was grown in a sustainable environment that nobody was getting impacted by negatively. So fair trade or Miami, we live in Miami and we actually have a ton of local fruit here. So there's this Instagram account. If you look up at Miami fruit, it's literally that easy, Miami fruit. Uh, you're gonna find a ton. They, they, they grow a ton of different varieties of avocados. Apparently here in Miami, we, we grow a ton of them. So um, just buying local, you know, instead of buying some that are sourced from elsewhere, such as Chile or like other places like, like Ecuador that are, you know, they're, they're being exploited for their land for this. Um, if we just source it locally, it'll be a little easier and better on the environment. But yeah, unfortunately, Patoka today is still being exploited negatively. Um, the individuals who live in these villages have yet to find um, a clean source of water. I heard, I read somewhere that they only get up to like 50, I think it was 50 liters per day, which apparently wasn't enough. I mean, 50 liters is nothing. Um, and so it's, it, it's crazy to see how, how they're being affected so negatively by just these individuals who are so greedy and selfish and egoistic with that. Um, so yeah, the two UN goals <laughs> that uh, match up with this are really important. The first one, number six, clean water and sanitation. Because unfortunately, the avocados are getting all the clean water they want. But the villagers, the people who actually live in these places, aren't getting clean water. Like they'll be reporting that sometimes the water comes out like yellow and murky, and and like people would be getting sick from drinking it, even though they claim it to be potable, which is it's, it's very unfortunate. And then number twelve, um, responsible consumption and production. I think this one's fairly straightforward. If the individuals who were cultivating avocados over in Chile would stop being dicks and be like, hey, you know what, maybe we should, you know, have a couple trade-offs, like, just don't use that much water, don't grow that many avocados, and allow the villagers to, like, actually, you know, live off of the land, it would be much more responsible on their part. But we also have to look at it from a more global scale, because one of the, one of one of um Chile's biggest exporters is that the right word to use I don't know they they export the one to China and to UK and so if the individuals who like the end consumer like the people that are actually buying avocados like actually looked at the data and and take a step back and and realize hey we shouldn't be sourcing avocados from places that are that are detrimental to their local environment we should rather look so locally or whatever you know if you if the market changes then the consumption and the, I mean, the, the production will, will change as well alongside that. So yeah, that's me. My name is Odin. Check out my next podcast on avocado trees. I got another YouTube video coming up on avocado fruits, on whether avocado is a fruit or a vegetable, but it's actually a fruit. So check that out. Um, if you've ever wondered whether a veggie table is a tomato or a fruit, I said that correctly, then all you need to know is that a vegetable happens to be both in a way because, wait, I'm sorry, a tomato happens to be both in a way because it's part of the plant that it grows from, but it is, but tomato is also the fruit of the plant that it grows from. I don't know either. So... Hope you have a good one. I'm having a good one. So you should be having a good one as well. And yes. <laughs> See ya.